Ropes and relationships. This is a part of my life series where I parallel things in the vineyard, winery, and the wine industry to different aspects of life. In this episode, we'll not only look at ropes and relationships, we'll also see how there's a correlation between them and happiness. Ropes and relationships hold some important parallels to life. It has some very powerful insights, particularly in today's environment. Uh, if this somehow resonates with you, I'd appreciate you letting me know in the comments below or just subscribe and ring the little bell. And best of all, if this was helpful, share this with a friend. Now, I have a friend that owns a vineyard northwest of Chicago. <laughs> One night he decided he needed to cut down a 40-foot tree that was in the middle of the vineyard. So, the next morning, I was there. Now, I say it was in the middle of the vineyard, but in reality, it was to one side of the vineyard where there was about a 40 by 40 foot grassy area that was not planted with any vines because the tree was competing for nutrients and casting a big long shadow. Uh, there was way too much shade. It was a barrier and hindrance which didn't allow the vines and grapes to flourish and grow. That morning we went out to assess what all we needed to get the job done. We realized we needed the tree to fall in the exact right direction so it wouldn't damage any of the vines. We knew how to cut wedges in the tree so that it would fall in that particular direction, but we didn't want to take any chances. So, in addition to the chainsaw, we were going to use several ropes and several stakes. We were going to pound several long stakes in the ground about 40 feet away from the tree and approximately 10 feet apart. With the appropriate amount of pressure or tautness on the ropes, the tree would fall between the two stakes, not damaging any of the vines. We went back to the shed to get the equipment. I stopped for a moment looking at and feeling the weight of the different ropes. You know, ever since I was a little kid, I always thought ropes were kind of cool, interesting. In the vineyard, or really, just in general, you have ropes that are made out of different material, different colors, different tensile strengths, different gauges, all kinds of different ropes. <laughs> Actually, if you're not careful, I might just do a Forrest Gump on you and, and start naming all the interesting things about the different types of ropes, lengths, strengths, and all that kind of stuff. But I'll spare you all that for today. In this video, we're going to focus on the way in which ropes are sort of like people even though our makeup is a little bit different. We, you and me, we have different levels of strength, both physical and emotional strength. When it comes to the different gauges of ropes, some ropes are made out of a single strand and others have double strands. And then there are some ropes that are made up with triple strands or three strands. The more strands that are woven together, the stronger the rope. That, that just makes sense. Uh, don't you agree? Once we got the equipment and a couple of ropes, one of the guys climbed about three quarters of the way up the tree, like a monkey, and tied it off. <laughs> then we did our thing. You know, during this pandemic, a lot of people have come to the end of their ropes. Life seems to be sort of unraveling for many people. People are frustrated with one another. Uh, there's more arguing. There's more physical and emotional abuse. There's more alcohol abuse. Many people just aren't happy. There's this guy, Robert Putnam. He's a world-renowned professor of policy at Harvard University. Over the years, he has dealt with and studied happiness. He says the strongest predictor of happiness are social relationships. Happiness is associated with the depth and breadth of our social connections. Putnam's studies strongly suggest that faith, church, and religion seem to be associated with subjective well-being or happiness. Even if you're not a churchy sort of person, interestingly, he goes on to say that his surveys underscore the importance of having church friends. There's something about religion and even having a church friend that seems to cause people to become more satisfied with their life. Anyway, 
Uh, to put it simply, the quantity and quality of our relationships have a direct bearing on our happiness. You know, if we go back to church for just a minute, the good book actually talks about people and ropes. It says, two are better than one. If one falls down, his friend is there to help him up. But pity the person who falls and has no one to help him up. Also, if two are trying to keep warm, how can one keep warm alone? Although one may be overpowered, two can defend themselves. A rope with three strands is not easily broken. Are you interwoven with other people? Have you been the type of person that says, I'm not very relational? Now here's the real question. Has that changed after experiencing quarantine and lockdown? Not very relational. Putnam says, if you say that, you're kidding yourself. You're hardwired to need other people. What you need, what I need, is people who love and respect you or us, not in spite of our shortcomings or faults, but because of our shortcomings and faults. <laughs> you know, without judgment, we love each other, warts and all. Someone that will hurt with you and encourage you to strive to a higher level of life. Someone who doesn't have any underlying goals, objectives, or secondary agendas. A person, a friend, that advises and encourages you to patience, justice, mercy, love and kindness. Now, when I talk about a friend, I'm not talking about those we bump into and like on social media. It's important to know those people are not friends. While some of these friends may be part of our offline life, in most cases, if we're being honest, there's little or no authentic relationship. What we all need are relationships where we can laugh out loud together, not just LOL. Cry together, not just emoji cry together. A personal friend, a real friend, a flesh and blood friend that you will physically put your arm around in a time of sorrow and need. A person you know intimately who can share in your life the victories and defeats. You know, it doesn't make any difference if you're in a ditch or in a boardroom, what your fabric is or your makeup. You need, we need a couple of people who are of good character, closed lip, that you know intimately who you can invest your life in, actually with each other. Keep in mind, I'm not talking about how many friends you have. Maybe it's a rope of three strands. Also, as you look at this, this is not about you. It's about the other strands and others, the other strands of the rope and beyond. The old adage holds true. The whole is greater than the sum of the parts. Strands. When we're interwoven, when we're interwoven together, this gives us, you, me, the ability to overcome the strains, challenges, barriers, and hindrances placed before us, and it positions us to help others so they can flourish and grow. With my best friends, in one hand, we hold love, compassion, the ideal. And in the other hand, <laughs> we hold it too before. With love and compassion, you hurt when they hurt, laugh when they laugh, provide strength when they weep, encourage each other when needed and provide a listening ear. <laughs> With a do before, it's to whoop me across the side of the head when I do something really stupid or stick it where the sun don't shine when I'm obstinate, pig-headed, unreasonable, and do what the crowd is doing. In short, we provide wise counsel to one another. Are you someone with closed lips that others can depend on? We don't just need community. We are wired to excel in community. You cannot stand up to the pressures, stress, and strains of life by yourself. If you try, the rope gets too tight. Eventually, the rope will unravel and snap. Studies show somehow and in some way, when it's least expected, the rope will snap. For the sake of yourself and others, prioritize community. As Harvard's Dr. Putnam's studies suggest, 
If you make it a church community, that will increase your subjective well-being or happiness. <laughs> oh, by the way, we cut down that old tree. It felt exactly where it needed to go. Subsequently, we planted more vines and expanded the possibilities for the future. You know, it's amazing what ropes can do. Well, there you have it. Ropes, relationships, and happiness. Hey, Posse, thanks so much for investing the time to watch this video. I trust it was helpful to you. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. And please consider hitting subscribe. Also, click here to check out our new online shop. We have a great lineup of wine-related items that will help you get the most out of your wine experience. Oh, and be sure to check out these other videos. Until next time, cheers.